Hello everyone and welcome back. So it has been a while since I dropped a video in my channel but from now onwards expect more of the videos. So for those who are new to the channel so here we have hands-on practice on networking mostly I do cover the CCNA topics from first topic to the last topic we also cover some firewall technologies including watchguard and fortigate and also i do cover content related to cyber security mostly on blue team inside and less on red team inside so in this video i'm going to take you through some of the basic of network security of which you are going to compromise one of the CID triad element which is availability. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Yasinia. So Yasinia is one of the tools which can be used to perform DHCP installation by sending release and request DHCP messages using different MAC addresses to the DHCP server which result to a DHCP starvation or it leads to release of all DHCP IP addresses available in the DHCP pool leaving none to be allocated for the legitimate clients which it leads to the DHCP service availability being compromised so let's get started guys This is the lab which I'll be using for the demo and before I get started I'll just walk you through the configs and just start the, 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 the four of the devices so I'll just start the layer 2 switch uh, the PC2 and also I'll start the DCP server Okay, so we'll, we'll just concentrate with this part of the network so we'll not we'll have nothing to do with the firewall the 40 gate firewall and the cloud so we'll, we'll be using this part of the lab so I'm going to start the attacking machine okay they starting so I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll open the, the the layer 2 switch console to walk you through the configs so for your information the devices are already configured so the DHCP service is configured in here in the DHCP server which is a, which is a, actually a router it's not a, the actual server so I'll just open console Okay, the parrot machine is still booting. It seems it is taking time, but it is almost. So, I've just started the console for the layer 2 and the DCP server, which is a router. So, the service is running in a router. So, So if there's someone who wants to understand how the DHCP configurations, the VLAN, the, the SVS, how they are configured in the layer 2 and the layer 3 devices, you can just take it from the link which is provided here. So in that video I have full explanation and 
will have full understanding of how the configurations are made so the layer 2 switch is almost there The parrot machine is up, just booted, so I'll just go. Okay. So it, it still have uh, has the default login credentials for parrot OS. So, so the PC2 and the layer 2 is up so I'll first walk you through the layer 2 configurations so what I'll do I'll just show run if I want to access all con configurations made for the configured in the layer 2 switch so okay so yeah we go so the interface gigabit 02 it is still scrolling oops oops so the interface gig 02 is the one which is connected to the DCP server with the root port with IP address of 192.160.10.2 with ne negotiation auto so it is able to negotiate automatically for both the doublets and speed so interface gig 00 description connection to the firewall so we have nothing to do with the firewall connection right now so there is still another configuration for the interface VLAN 1 IP of 192.168.168.20.1 and also there's the helper IP helper address so the help IP helper address is for forwarding the layer 2 DCP messages from the endpoints when they are requesting for the DCP services there's also dynamic root configuration for the networks 10, 20 and 40 or in area 1 Seems that's all with layer, the layer 2 switch. The layer 2 switch is a Cisco. There is a Cisco switch. So the configs are related to Cisco switch. Eh? I'll also show the configs. Show. Okay, so there's IP DCP excluded addresses from range 20, 20 to 20. 192.168.20.0 to 192.168.20.20. Those are like. 20 IP addresses excluded so yes the DCP pool for the VLAN 1 so the all the handpoints or the end devices will be allocated IP addresses in the range 192.160.20.20 to 192.160.20.255 so the network is the 20 network the default router which is the actually the basically is the default gateway is 192.168.20.1 and the dns server here is the i, I actually i configured the, the google dns server of which right now we have nothing to do with the dns So interface gig 02 slash 0 is the one 
which is connected to a layer 2 switch with negotiation auto there's also dynamic root OSPF with net 10 network area 0 okay So that's all with the DCT server. So the configuration are just like straightforward. Now that I've walked you through the configurations, now it's the time to check whether the, the endpoints are able to obtain IP addresses dynamically. Okay, so. I'll start with the PC2. Okay, so PC2 has been allocated. I be allocated. I be address one nine two one sixty dot twenty dot twenty two. So I'll also check from the Parrot OS, which is the attacking machine. There has been also allocated IP address 192.16.20.21. Okay, so now that all the machines are able to print IP address dynamically, Now is the time to. Now I'll, I'll I'll debug the IP the server the DHCP server events to be able to see what to be able to see what will be happening from the DHCP server side from the console. Okay, the debugging is on. You can just see from here. So the debugging will allow me to see the whatever will be happening from the DCP server. So debugging should be used carefully. And yes, it can lower the performance of the network, especially in productive environment. So I usually use the debug when whenever I'm doing the troubleshooting. So it's best practice to use debug when necessary. Okay, now I'll jump straight to the attacking machine. Then I'll just launch Yasinia. which is the attacking tool to perform the HCP starvation. Okay, yes, the Yasinia. This is alpha version of GTK GUI. No two options are, are implemented. So from here you can launch the attacks. You can edit the interfaces from here. You can list the attacks, clear stats. Can just you can just do everything from the task the task bar above. So what I'll do, 
and we are just working on the git cp so i'll just come here launch attack then i'll go to git cp you can just see from here you can launch different protocol attack like cdp ito 2.1 q ito 2.1 dtp hsrp hsl mpls stp and vtp but for us we are going to do the dtp will be sending dtp discover packets the dtp server which will lead to allocation of all the the existing IP addresses in the DHCP pool. So let's just go it. Okay, you can just see from here what is happening. You can see the message type discover. They said they discover messages from the attacking device Ethernet zero, Ethernet zero. So we can just jump to the HCP server console and can just see what is happening from here. You can see the address, the IP addresses are being allocated. For each of the requests sent by the attacking machine, DHCP request, an IP address is released for the request. So you can just see it from here. So this will continue until there is no more IP address in the DHCP pool to be allocated. You can see for every request a list is made by the DHCP server. You can, if you, you, you are th that careful, you can just notice from the, from the terminal, there's the pull exhaustion long. Okay. Okay. Can I'll, I'll just go to the attacking machine. List the attacks. And for, then I'll stop. Then I have stopped the attack. So when I come here, you just notice that. Okay, I'll just wait until the until the it has stopped from the DHCP server. Something I just want to show you. Okay, what I do? I just grab a sleeping tool. Okay, it has stopped. So, I wanted to do a to capture sleep to share, but fortunately, the DCP <coughs> debug messages are stopped. So, you can just notice from here pool exhausted. So the pool, DHCP pool is, is exhausted, so there is no more IP addresses to be assigned to the legitimate clients. So for instance, you can just come here, just add a VPC. Then I'll connect it to the 
uh, post switch I'll also start the console. console. So the IP addresses are be are being returned. So I don't want the IP addresses to be returned. So I'll just I'll I'll I'll, I'll restart the attack again. I just noticed that the IP addresses was started to be returned when I stopped the attack the DCP when I stopped actually basically the sending the discover attack messages. So what I have done I've restarted the attack again. I just want to maintain the pool drive. Okay, it has been exhausted again, the pool, so what I'll do now, I'll try to request an IP address from the DCP server. Okay, let's start console for this client here. So I'll try to request IP address. 
and we'll see what will happen. This is what happened in our I request the IP address. So there's a denial of service happening here. So let's see, let's see what will happen if I stop the attack. And because when I stop the attack, the the DCP server will return the IP addresses, and IP addresses will be available in the pool to be allocated. So what I'll do is just stop the attack. So the attack has been stopped. You can see the IP addresses are being returned. can see what was happening for each MAC address, an IP address was listed. So, so what I do, I in the process I saw the attack is stopped. Let's see whether I'll be able to obtain IP addresses from this client. Okay, so the client has now successfully obtained IP address dynamically from the DCP server that the attack has been stopped. So that's how DCP starvation can be done using Senior and in the next video I'll cover how to prevent such attack to your network. Make sure you follow along for the series of the security videos which I'm going to release. Thank you.